my screen. Cool. And let me see if I go full screen, how bad it's going to be. All right, cool. It works perfect. Awesome. As you all know, this is a port functional group update. Today is brought to you by myself, Lyle, and Tom Cooney. And you may be wondering, is this your beautiful house? That's a Talking Heads reference. Uh, you may actually be wondering who Tom Cooney is. Uh, Tom is our new support director. Uh, brought him in to help us scale and vision out how support will look in the future at GitLab so that we can grow to meet the demands of new and interesting customers. Uh, so we're going to talk about everything you see on this slide today, and we're going to jump on through. Uh, so I'm going to take this moment to uh, introduce Tom and let Tom talk about what's going on a little bit in support land, and then Lyle and I will jump in and talk about some hires. Thank you, Lee, and yeah, thank everybody uh, for accommodating the, the three-party uh, presentation mode today. Um, first off, I wanted to talk about some hiring and some very important uh, elements there, some key talent, uh, first starting with Tom Atkins, who will be joining us later this month in uh, Cork, Ireland. Um, he's going to be our EMEA manager, support engineering manager. Um, and we're very excited. He comes from Circle CI, has great experience there. Also, very good experience in remote management of folks. So uh, we're looking forward to that. He's also um, deployed a, a knowledge management system in Circle CI. So uh, we're going to leverage some of that expertise and experience as well. Um, now I'd get, have Lee and uh, Lyle kind of introduce some of the new members over the last month. Awesome, I'll jump in. Um, so we have two in support engineering. Um, so far we have Ronald, he's already started. He's in EMEA, say hi, reach out to him in Slack, welcome him in. Uh, and then a new hire that will be starting in a few weeks. So once he starts, we'll let you know on a team call and you'll get a chance to meet him as well. Lyle. Yeah, on the services side, uh, Cynthia started a couple weeks ago and we have uh, in two weeks actually starting two new agents. Uh, can I say their names? Tristan and uh, Jerome will be starting. Uh, Tristan's in North America and Jerome is in the uh, Philippines, so in the APEC region. So very excited about that. That's great, Lyle. Thanks. And thanks, Lee. Um, yeah, we just got that offer our accepted, I think, from Jerome yesterday. So that's awesome. Um, and before we leave this slide, just wanted to give a real loud shout out to the recruiting team. Um, since I've been here, they have been extremely busy and uh, effortlessly giving us lots of candidates to get through. Um, and as you can see, we've made a lot of great hires. So um, thank you, especially to Nadia, Trevor, and Steve, uh, who have been tirelessly working with us all. So thanks. Absolutely. We cannot do it without support. Support needs support. Amen. Uh, so Tom, over to you here to talk a little bit about our uh, organization structure and how you think we can use that to scale. Sure. Um, thanks. Uh, so as we bring on new management, uh, what we're wanting to do is align the regions with service um, support agents and support engineers. So when Tom Atkins starts, uh, we'll get folks that are in the EMEA region reporting into Tom. Uh, Lee will take on all of the America East and Lyle will take on all of America's West. Um, we're still looking for an APAC manager to align those folks. Um, and the idea is to get um, I'll, I'll use an overused term, but some synergies around the service side and the self-hosted side, um, but also to get um, more, more time zone aligned management so folks are, are not working both sides of the candle, aka Lee, and, uh, and they get some you know, more immediate managerial help. I think the other piece is just being able to get uh, the expertise from both agents and engineers together and thinking how we can keep a common experience for our, our customer base. So um, we've, I've still got some work to do, but we've got a July 23rd targeted rollout. That's actually Tom Atkins' first day. So. Awesome. Thanks, Tom. I'm going to expect some questions on that later in the QA, but for now we'll dive on into some metrics here. Um, 
just wanted to show some data that we've been paying attention to that drives our hiring and some interesting things here. This data goes through May. Uh, we're looking to get this updated and get this driven into things like Looker and, and more advanced, but it's driven by a Google Sheet right now. And you can see the ticket volume. So this is incoming ticket volume. Uh, I'm gonna make sure I relabel these. Um, but regionally, if you look on the left-hand side, we can see America is driving a ton, EMEA is in second, APAC in third. And then if you say, well, what is the volume actually comprised of? And if you split it by uh, self-hosted or what we call services, gitlab.com and GitHost, you can see this huge rise uh, on the services side, uh, very quickly catching up to uh, self-hosted volume. The tickets are a little bit different in how hard they are to work and, and the nature of the, the tickets, but we are trying to see if that trend holds and passes uh, in the next few months. That's definitely something that we're paying attention to uh, because that's gonna drive our hiring decisions for sure. Uh, but to see that was enlightening because we're seeing a ton of growth on the services side. I have some more graphs here um, as well. This is our self-hosted SLA across all self-hosted customers. You can see in the past, uh, since about mid-June, we've been on a huge uptick, um, pushing way up, really excited to see um, the team growth and the expertise, the knowledge there that's been helping and uh, making sure everybody is focused on learning the new things. Geo, Kubernetes, HA, absolutely top three concerns right now. Uh, and that success has been driving us, uh, driving well there. We can see the gitlab.com and git host SLA. Um, the biggest thing to look at when you see this graph is just the consistency. If you look on the right hand side, there was a lot of spikes and dips. And now we've been a lot more consistent driving up there. The average here is in the 90s right now and we're pushing that up. So that's really exciting as well. Uh, huge shout out to Lyle for the work there. Uh, he's been doing a great job helping that team get started and get rolling. So that's phenomenal. And we are going to start thinking about CSAT. We'll, Tom will talk a little bit more about that later, but right now looking at our CSAT, uh, it's about 94% across everything in Zendesk right now. It's 94%, uh, which is pretty good. When you look at the bad rating, uh, I wanted to try and get it in this slide. Every bad rating, they didn't leave a comment, right? That's the hard part. Now we have to go dive and figure out what made the six people that gave us a bad rating think it was bad because they it was bad enough to say it was bad, but bad, not bad enough to tell us why. Uh, so that's one of those pieces that we have to figure out now uh, and we'll be learning and diving into uh, some more. So I wanna talk a little bit about what's going on on the support engineering side and Lyle will talk a little bit more about what's going on on the services side. Uh, really excited about a process that we have called support fix. Um, I'll link that text in this deck to the handbook where it explains what that is. But basically small bugs that supports, support engineers find, we should be encouraged and enabled to fix them. We've had three instances of, instances of that in the last two months really excited about that. This is the extreme way to reduce tickets, right? We are taking ownership over saying, hey, we can start to fix those problems. GitLab lets everyone contribute. Extreme transparency, it is a phenomenal, phenomenal thing. So really excited about that. We're also working on getting our premium customer priority uh, set up. That's in the MR stage. We have a couple of things that we have to understand about uh, some contracts. So I've been working with Jamie. Jamie on the legal side has been a huge help there. Uh, this should get pushed over the line um, in the next five days or so. And that's gonna shift what it means, what type of tickets uh, get different SLAs for premium customers. Uh, so you could check out that MR to see what we're thinking about. This model's closer to what the industry uh, expects. Uh, and this model's closer to what some of our larger customers expect. Um, I'll, I'll share a very quick story. I, you know, I was dealing with a couple of our larger clients as they were coming in and seeing their contracts and seeing that actually they didn't want everything with a four hour response time. They wanted a tiered response model where they knew that the important things would get important attention and the things that were less important will get less attention. And that spurred a, a spark to say, actually, I think we should do this across the board. Uh, and it mirrors what we see in the industry. So that was really exciting. Uh, Lyle, go ahead, tell us about what's going on on the services side. 
Yeah, on the services side, the biggest thing that's going on is that uh, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be migrating free users out of Zendesk. So right now on all of our like how to get support pages, we're directing them toward uh, the GitLab support issue tracker, but somehow lots of people find their way into Zendesk. So we're going to be setting up a trigger to encourage them out um, at the same time that if we, if we, if a customer writes in and they get that, then they'll be able to reply back. So they'll get instant feedback if we're not detecting them as a customer, which will actually be a better customer experience than right now, where every so often we actually miss out on an opportunity to serve a customer and because they're not marked with right SLA. So overall, like what's motivating it is just a better customer ex experience, better user experience and more transparency. So we can leverage that um, support form tracker to like, for other users to find each other, to help each other, and to like group together like issues. Um, outside of that, we're working on just a lot of process things. So as you all know, this team is still fairly young. Um, and so things like statement of support, where we can uh, just describe exactly what sort of things we support and also describe what we expect of our customers. So if they don't know how to get push, like we can't help them learn Git. Um, that's just beyond what we're able to do for them. Um, we also are working on a workflow to decouple internal service requests from Zendesk so that they don't languish there. Uh, and then lots and lots of just workflows and policies. So that's what's happening on the services side. Awesome. Thanks, Lyle. Let's go ahead and let me make sure I didn't skip a slide. Yeah, perfect. Tom, tell us yep. about some OKRs. Excellent, thanks. Yeah, thanks guys for those updates. Um, so what we're doing in the team performance, there's three categories I think that we're really focused on from an OKR this quarter. Uh, what we're, how we're measuring our team, uh, our hiring is still going to be aggressive and uh, process improvements in addition to what uh, Lyle and Leah talked about. You know, we're, we're thinking that early steps on what we need to do for knowledge management. I mentioned that with Tom Atkins. So there's a lot of process aspects of things. From a, when we go back up to the performance metrics, we want to measure the team on a number of, I think, levers, if you will. Uh, the first being our SLA, um, but we're also very keen on measuring how satisfied the customers are, right? So we, we introduced uh, earlier the CSAT score and, and wanting to pay more attention to that so that we can make sure we're not underserving our customers, but also make sure we're not over-servicing. So we'll have some uh, OKRs around CSAT, and then looking at uh, how we serve the customers and how frequently we go back and forth with customers and try to improve that particular customer experience. So we'll look at some things around process and um, however we need to do that, but we wanna improve the customer experience in that area. So those are the three key uh, or KPIs for, for this quarter. Um, and that's how we're going to try and focus it. So we're going to be looking for SLAs at 95% at for our premium and gold and CSAT at 95% as well. So we'll take, take approach at that for the, uh, for the quarter and see how that works out and how we can, again, improve the customer experience through that. And I think that's the last slide. Awesome. Yeah. I think we go into questions. Awesome chat any questions or feel free to use your voice happy to hear it uh, you can direct them to tom myself or lyle or the group uh, and we can see what we can answer for you uh, kyla had a great question in chat just understanding how uh, customer satisfaction surveys go out right now that's powered by zendesk and i think it's a few days i don't i'm gonna say a few because i don't know exactly the number um, and we can tweak it, but it's a few days after the ticket gets resolved, they'll get a notification that says, how is our support? Um, and Tom, Lyle, and I have had some conversations around how frequently we should be doing that or how we should adjust that. And that's something that we'll play around with. Uh, Kyla also asked what our highest rating was ever. I think we hit 98 at one point, but also it's one of those numbers where on the first of the month with one review in, you're at 100%. And as more numbers come in, uh, those can get shifted a bit. So I think 96 sounds about right for what I would say the average was in the past. So any other questions? Anything else? Uh, Kyla got another one in there. Um, yeah, so Kyla asked, do we know how many filled out versus opted out? So we had a 25% response rate. So out of 460, 25% of people um, responded. So, yeah, and I, to add to that, I think that the 
Um, yeah, 460 surveys sent out, and that's a percentage, a small percentage of the actual tickets that we solved out. So they don't go out for every for every transaction, I don't believe. Um, so we'd have to get kind of look at what percentage we're actually sending out. So awesome! Thanks for the clarification, Tom. All right. If there are no other questions, class is dismissed. Hope y'all's learned something and had some fun. Uh, thanks for. Uh, dealing with our crazy technical three-way uh, presentation. I think it worked out pretty well. Uh, and we're going to maybe do that again. Who knows? Uh, we'll keep you on your toes. Maybe next time we'll all uh, dress up as Star Wars characters or the Fantastic Four or something. Uh, we'll figure it out. The three so, amigos. Yes, three amigos. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you all. Have a great one. Thanks, Bye. See you around. Bye, all.